including members that today session is supposed to be taken by Anand P. Jangir. He is suddenly travelled to the abroad. The person who is readily came with his helping hand, none other than C. Narasimhan Elagor. So we must thank him uh, for uh, immediate uh, call and uh, talk with his body and and he is a very good resource person in the subject. So the today's subject is analytics in fraud investigation. This is the next biggest transformation. We have with us speaker C. A. Narasimha. I request C. A. Ganapati Bhatt to escort the speaker and welcome with a proper bouquet and a small moment. Traditional methods of audit have limitations 
and that is where we now move to the next phase where we start looking going beyond audit we start looking into fraud prevention and detection techniques and what more can i use better than analytics to solve that okay so on that note let's quickly get started a uh, brief profile of mine was uh, introduced by uh, the vice chairman thank you sir so to quickly move on to some bit of hot statistics where do we stand now uh, this was a survey conducted by pwc global economic crime and fraud survey it says that around 49% of the global organizations have experienced some sort of the economic crime i am a little surprised how the 51% did not answer perhaps they have chosen not applicable or maybe they chose not to answer because financial crime is something which would happen in any organization the materiality is something which varies so this is one thing which is factoring or which is influencing this entire market let's move a little into those details what are the types of these common economic frauds or you know economic crimes misappropriation you know that is a classical example and we know right from our good old article ship days till date we know that that is one area where huge amount of uh, you know abnormalities occur huge amount of deviations occur compared to the existing practices so that is where which they have, you know they were able to identify second which all of us know cyber crime you know that is one other area where this target Uh, or you know the attackers today are focusing on because most of us invariably have an online life whether it is through a facebook whether it is through a social media correct or probably you know i i, I was told that many of them are also listening this lecture live on uh, you know the ica channel as well as the facebook channel correct so all of us have a digital or an online presence and all of us can be subject to this sort of a risk and then fraud committed by the consumers you know take the examples of e-commerce companies i'm sure many a times you have ordered a product you placed the request for refund the refund came and one or two days later the product also came with so people thought that was an option to exploit and many people have actually used this as a channel to exploit so this is where we are stand as on day where we have huge possibility of economic crimes and frauds let's take a little at so who is this person committing this fraud 52% says it is by the internal actors who the employees correct and that is why in organizations we say you know in the moment uh, whenever you a client introduces you to his finance team and he says sir this person has been with us since the inception of the company has been with us since the beginning as an auditor immediately one of your eyebrows should raise reason is the most trusted employee many a times have been proven that he is the most or he is the weakest link in that chain and i'm sure in your experience you have come across these sort of scenarios let's go a little like 68% of the external perpetrators responsible for 40% of the fraud now who are these external perpetrators classical cases are vendors the procurement cycle is that one cycle where huge number of cases of fraud occur and and that is one area despite deploying hundreds of internal controls you will still find it and the most difficult thing for you to audit is that kickback component which is there and i was also reading a survey or an article which says the corporate frauds are corporate procurement based frauds if at all if it is was quantified it could perhaps be more than a few political scams that took me by surprise why name any large companies the procurement managers invariably have some sort of a kickback or a tie up and that is becoming increasingly difficult for us as auditors to audit next 24% of the frauds are committed by the senior management and when i use the word senior management it is the cxo ceo cfo all these people and that is increased by 16% that means around 8% year on year and then 91% of the most disruptive frauds were brought to the attention of the senior management which was good that is the only good thing which i probably see in this particular slide or the survey let's look at it a little further now where do we stand year on year what is the rate of crime if you move a little further year on year 49% has been the 2018 you know the crime rate 
And if I was a statistician and if I have to use a linear programming to extrapolate, I am sure, unlike the sensex which falls down, I am sure this will work. Correct? So that is where we stand. There is a reasonable probability that this was going to increase in the year to come. Let's move a little further. And which of these countries reported the maximum of the frauds happened in Africa? Well, let's ignore what is far away. Let's look into our own <coughs> continent. Asia is not very far off. It is somewhere amongst the top three or top four for a good reason. And this is not a bad, this is not a good reason either. Correct? And you find the number which is inside, I think because of the color dimension, I'm not sure whether it is visible. Those are two years backwards. In 2016, the Asia Pacific was 30%, whereas 46% has been the rise in the crimes. Which means our priority is very clear. And what is that as auditors? Fraud prevention. In fact, we clearly say as auditors, we know that we cannot identify every possible fraud. But we are now having the authority to verify and test internal controls. When I verify and test internal controls, this means I have an obligation and a moral right and a responsibility to see whether, whether these controls could fail A and B, whether these controls could have a fraud based impact on my financials. Let's move a little further, you know, speak getting more into the specifics, what is it that I intend to cover today? First, I thought I'll give a background of what is analytics. You know, we have heard a lot of analytics, we have heard, you know, fancy terms such as analytics, etc. What is it and why? A little later, what are a few misconceptions or myths which we have come across? A few data analytics tools and steps, you know, a few analytic tools. Then I'll probably give you a major part of my presentation will focus on practical insights, meaning, which are those functions which you can use using these tools so that you can unearth issues or you can unearth or identify problems. And of course the last is a small sort of an area of evaluation. As you mentioned tomorrow you are doing a procurement audit, you are doing an expense audit, what are a few areas which you have to evaluate. So before I move a little further, I thought I should take a small poll. You know by a show of hands, simple like an AGM. Alright, so how many of us have used analytics anywhere in this world? How many of them fall into the first option? Yes. Okay, one or two. How many of them say no? A majority. Okay, I'll go a little further. How many of them don't know what analytics is all about? And so that's why I thought I should be attending this session. Alright, so we find a few of them falling under both these categories but a majority is under the no category, alright. So probably I will take you through a few of these a little later, we will get an understanding how easy it is for you to analyze this with live data, you know, uh, the live uh, simulated environment. <coughs> First, what is this word called analytics? You know, if I have to put a so called definition, you could probably say it's a process of inspecting, cleaning, transforming and modeling. Now that's a good old definition language. See, most of the time these definitions are kept in such a way that the layman cannot understand. And that's why it's called definition. Correct? On a lighter note, but still, it's a process of inspecting, cleansing and transforming. The biggest challenge in that case of a data analytics is how do I get the data into an analyzable form? And that is where the challenge lies. And what do we do? We identify useful information, you identify conclusions and you try to take decisions. I just give a very interesting comparison between data and, and information over here. Data is always raw facts. Information is processed. Meaning, let's say if you are watching a cricket match, what is the first question you would ask your friend? Hey, what is the score? If he says the score is 35 for 3, that means it is summarized form and it is giving a useful way of analyzing. If he says the first ball of the over was a 4, the second ball was a 6, the third ball was a wicket, fourth ball was a wicket, fifth ball was a no ball, you would not be interested in hearing him out. But that is necessary. Why? You could analyze. I was reading a recent video, just you know, giving an example of cricket. Anil Kumble along with Microsoft, they came up with one very interesting thing where a small patch would be fixed on the back of the cricketer. Whenever a person is practicing, he tries to tap the ball. 
and the ball touches one of the regions in the bat and it either goes for a 6 or 4 single or whatever may be. Now what they have done is, Microsoft has used this artificial intelligence and analytics engine to identify the performance of the player based on this. <laughs> Look at this, how differently people are behaving or how differently. That means we are having so much of data around us and that's why we say we are flooded with the data. But the reality is we are still hungry for information and that is where the gap is. So if I have to put in a layman's perspective of analytics, this is what I would say. Analytics is nothing but computer assisted audit tools, which is called as CATs. Yeah. These CATs could be your, a simple example of an Excel. For all you know, Tally also has a CAT. We look into it. Correct? So that is a basic definition or a basic meaning of what a analytics is. It is a collection of tools, techniques, best practices which analyze digital data. Which means as long as the data is in rows and the columns, my dear friend, I think you can use analytic tools. That's the term. It empowers auditors to use audit of digital data. And why do you require digital data? So that is what the data is. Few years down the lane, all our clients are going to have data in their cloud-based software. You know, there are software such as QuickBooks who are available. You just have to link your bank account and automatically it starts transacting. And automatically it starts rather, you know, grouping the transaction. Which would mean the process of accounting can also be done by a non-accounting non background person. And you know, I happened to meet a friend of mine from here, he, you know, he flew down from US and he was saying that he had a business. I said, great. I asked him a simple question as an accountant. Which accounting package do you use? Because I knew that Tally had a huge nomination in India. Out of curiosity, I wanted to know which is the software which is being used. He immediately said QuickBooks. I said, okay. Do you have an accountant to who maintains it? He said, no. I am a software engineer, but I still know how to maintain my accounts. Why? Because it is made that very simple. Neither am I endorsing, nor am I telling this is a good or a bad, but what I want to throw light is the fact that things are now slowly started getting automated and you have all transaction in digital form. Let's take another example to understand this. Number of trips made by Ola or Uber in a city of Bangalore. This is available in a form of rows and columns. If I have to audit this, can I use my traditional technique of sampling? The answer is no. It is just not possible and that is where analytics comes into picture. And the beauty of analytics is it can audit 100% which sampling cannot do. Alright, so that's the basics of analytics which I thought I should be driving before I move a little further into what are the types of analytics. Analytics broadly could be bucketed under three categories. A is a prescriptive analytics. I'm sure most of us have tried booking a flight we, by the time we exited the screen and came out, the flight prices increased. And he who gets the cheapest flight is a person who is actually, a, you know, it's a sort of an achievement after passing CA exam. <laughs> Alright? On a lighter note. But means getting this price, how do, you, how do these airlines actually do that? It's all based on analytics. Forget that. Peak time traffic, you are booking a cab on Ola or Uber. All of a sudden, the price is increased like anything. In fact, a friend of mine was telling me this, that he booked a taxi, normally book, books a taxi from his home to office. At morning 8 a.m., the price showed at 210 rupees. For whatever reason, his account was did not have that Paytm balance or that Ola money, etc. He asked his brother to look into it. His brother booked the same location, from same location to same location, the price showed was 175. Now this comes an interesting question. What are they doing? They are trying to identify target groups, they are identifying the way in which they can price their products and that's more of the prescriptive type. Let's move a little ahead. Predictive. Predictive is how frequently is this person going to visit my shop? Let's take an example of a company called Big Basket. You know, you have a concept where you can order your groceries and they get it delivered within a day or two or sometimes even the same day. 
Now this company, assuming you are using, you have become an auditor of this, this company what they do is they give you analytics to say along with this, if you have completed one month, immediately the next month they say, last month you ordered this, why don't you order this? Forget that. Let's buy a mobile phone on Amazon or Flipkart. The moment you buy that mobile phone, below it says, people who bought this mobile phone also bought this. What are they trying to do? Cross sell. And how is that being done? Analytics. And the beauty of these analytics are these are all automated. These are all automated. And come to the last. Descriptive. Descriptive is more on the recommendation part of it and you know, and likewise. So that is where analytics, if I have to speak from a theoretical perspective. Now we understood analytics is of something which is relevant. Now moving to a fact, I am an auditor. Tomorrow I might be doing an investigation, I might be doing an internal audit, or for all you know, for my statutory audit, I want to know how can I use these techniques. Let's look into that. Why should I have these power of data analytics? A. You can identify unknown risks. <coughs> risks which you were not even aware of, you will be able to identify. I'll give a simple example. One of the banks I was doing an audit, they gave me a dump of fixed deposit receipt and they also gave me what is the interest rate. As a simple accountant, what I would do? Take the interest divided by the fixed deposit amount the, and multiply it was a quarterly interest so I used to multiply by 4 to get the annual rate of return. I applied this. I found that the company had a policy, the bank had a policy 6% or 7% was the rate of interest. All of them paid within 7%. There were some persons who were falling under 7.5%. I said great. I asked them why. Then immediately told, sir, senior citizens have a half percent extra. I said great. Then I went and verified. There was one of the senior citizen by name XYZ Private Limited. <laughs> I was sure. I said, so, Madam, you told me that a senior citizen, correct? But how can he have a XYZ Private Limited? Then we did an investigation. We got to know the rule written in what that bank software was very simple. If age is greater than 60, directly calculate an additional half percentage. Now comes the interesting question. Now, tomorrow if I am doing an audit of this, if I had adopted the traditional methods, do you think I would have even been able to identify? The answer is no. And that is where digital data comes into picture. I am sure all of us sitting in this room use some way or the other have done a bank audit, have done some way or the other, you know, a large company audit where there are huge number of transactions. That is where unknown risk can be identified. Let's take a little step further. Early warnings or early issues. Any errors, early warnings you are able to identify. For instance, a company had a EOQ model and the EOQ model was very simple, all of us are aware. The moment, uh, EOQ coupled with stock level, the moment it fell below a particular level, the trigger goes for the economic order quantity. Fantastic. But it so happened that one of the supplier continuously kept on supplying the goods and they were not able to understand why. And then when we did some sort of a check, they realized that product alone, huge quantity of stock were there. Why? Because the supplier kept on supplying it. Then we asked a simple question, why did the supplier send these goods so many times? Well, the answer we received was, there was an auto-generated email from the system saying that goods shortage immediately dispatched the goods. I said, okay, that's a good control. But then they said, when the EOQ model was implemented and amended, they forgot to remove or make alterations to that model. And what was the result? Kept on supplying the raw material. And when they keep on supplying the raw material, what happens? I have huge amount of inventory. And that company had multiple go-downs, multiple warehouses. Now imagine this sort of a scenario. Early warnings, early issues you can identify. Let's look at the next. Creating profiles. This is one area typically in banking they are using it. You know, there have been cases where withdrawals happen at a particular ATM, deposits happen in a particular branch. That is a general phenomenon. But all of a sudden, you find some sort of a weird trend. Immediately an alert is sent. I am sure most of you when you are using your credit card, let us say you have used it to purchase a high value item. Or let us say you used it 
for a forex transaction, let's say for a you know SIP link or we have to purchase something from abroad, etc. Immediately within 15 minutes to half an hour, many of the banks call you, call you and say, Sir, we got an alert and is this who you, is this you who performed the transaction? Why? They are able to create profiles. They know this is what your profile is. Some exception immediately is getting identified. And we need data analytics because we need to move from hindsight to foresight. Meaning, it is just not sufficient if I analyze the past. I need to look into the future. I need to see where the trend is. The very fact that, the very fact that many of them have come here is because we know that analytics is something which is going to take over future. That means it is the necessary and it's the order of day. The beauty of analytics is it can perform repeated tests. And when you use the word repeated test, what am I referring to? Let us say you are filing a GST return. The traditional process is what? We will get a sales dump, summarize the sales dump, categorize based on percentage, upload it to the website. Simple process. Now let us presume you had to audit this particular client. You did not file the GST return. Somebody else filed the GST return. Very good. Every year they give you one folder. Every month they give you one folder. Sir, so this is what is the input. This is what is the various activities you perform. This is the final result. Great. Now, I have to apply this test, whatever I plan to do, 12 times on each of these files. Why? Only then I will be able to ensure that completeness is taken care of. The problem over here is, if I apply 12 times, imagine the time I would take. In fact, I would prefer a robot to do that. Anyways, 2.0 is getting released tomorrow. Correct? You can probably ask Chitty to do it. Chitty tell me what is the GST audit. Of course, it will get confused seeing the GST law, but nevertheless. Oh, 2.0. Oh, 2.0. Correct? <laughs> so that's where the catch is. Correct? Thank you, madam, for correcting me. So that is where we stand. That means we have repeated steps which are being performed. When repeated steps are being performed, the beauty of this is that you can say, perform these 10 steps, click a button and it keeps on doing it. Now let's go to the last one. Declining audit relevance using traditional methods. There have been many a times where our client comes on September last week, sometimes even September 30th. Sir, please file the returns. And we know it's a tax audit case. And we know some basic checks we have to do, we have done those and somehow we have finalized. At that point you realized there was a fraud of 1 lakh rupees. Immediately you tell the client, Sir, fraud of 1 lakh rupees. Expecting that 10% at least my fee will increase this time. <laughs> client says, thank you sir, I got to know last year only, please file the returns. Imagine this, we applied a technique on fraud prevention. Well, if we were able to give an early signal, while I am not sure if your client will increase the 10% fee, but he will at least ensure your fee comes 10 days earlier. And that's an achievement. And that is what we are giving as a value addition. And that is what analytics is all about. Let's take a look into it. Now this might look like the iceberg which sunk the Titanic. A small piece of cake on top of the sea, whereas it is so deep inside. As an auditor, if we apply the traditional techniques, we are looking only on the top. When are we even going inside? Are we able to go deeper into this? The answer is no. Why? The limitation of the traditional method. Correct? So that is where it is quick and simple and reasonable extrapolation. Very good. But the negative side, limited visibility. And at the same time, the sample may not be a representative of all. This is the biggest challenge we are facing today. Many a times, way back when we did statistical audits and you know, statistical analytic techniques, we understood that a sample represents the population. But the reality is, in today's reality, forget it. Let me try to give you a jovial way of understanding the sample versus actual. Let us presume tomorrow you were auditing this. I know it's a little funny, but still. Assuming you were auditing this, what will you, if this was your population, how would you be able to pick up samples? A. Random sample. B. 
based on the cap or based on the scar. But would you be able to identify that there is a panda in between the thousands of snowmen? And that is why analytics is important. And that is the need for having analytics into your system or into your organization. Let's look into this. Tomorrow, let us say the same thing was your audit sample. How will you alter it? You could probably filter based on hands. You could filter based on scar. You can filter based on eyes. Which means you could filter based on rounded numbers. You could filter based on weekend payments. How many of them have enough? Try to attempt a weekend payment. A simple formula will help you achieve this. Go to the date cell, insert a column, just write the formula is equal to T E X T. Bracket open, D uh, uh, quotes, D D D D, bracket close. It will tell you which day that particular transactions. You filter, see how many transactions are happening on Sunday, how many transactions are happening on different dates. A simple checks like this. And that is where we need to understand that analytics is very easy to adapt and it is very powerful as well. So I have answered two major questions which was running in your mind. A. What is analytics? B. Why analytics? Now let's go into a common myth which we have. We are always of the opinion that these things or these are the problems. The first problem Analytics is not applicable for my CA office. Why? Neither my client size matches the requirement, neither the audit fee he gives matches the requirement, or for some other reasons. The biggest myth is analytics is for large companies. I think we need to break the stereotype. It is applicable for every organization, irrespective of the transaction. As long as you have digital data, you can use analytics. B. It is applied only when you have humongous or mammoth volumes of data. It is applicable for e-commerce company, Flipkart, Amazon, not for me. It is incorrect. As long as you have data, you can apply that. In fact, I will show you how, how these are being used. You require complicated tools. My dear friends, a simple tool called as Excel is more than enough to do majority of the analytical things. But the problem is, if you have to do series of steps, you have to write multiple formula. And that, we do not have the patience. So, that is where we can rely upon third party tools. Next, I need to be a data scientist. That is our latest buzzword which is, you know, running in. So, data scientist literally means the person who understands data. No, that is also not true. It is driven by maths and statistics. I know all of us after our uh, P1 or after our CA, uh, what is the foundation or CPT, whatever the scheme called, we didn't have mathematics, we were very happy. And one of the reasons we moved into CA was because of mathematics not being there, etc. etc. It is not so complicated. And the beauty of about this is, even if you have to calculate standard deviation, you need not use a calculator. Your Excel will calculate it. And the last, it requires huge qualification. Absolutely not. All that it requires is a very important qualification called CS, Common Sense. Heavy investment, no tools are available as affordable as 5,000 to 10,000 rupees also. Alright, so these tools are available. And it's all about algorithms, again, I'm sorry, that's not the case. Okay, can I have multiple types of data which I can analyze? The answer is yes. I can have multiple types of data which I can analyze. First, let us understand what is the type of data which we have. Structured, unstructured. Let's take a simple example to understand what is a structured data. You get it in rows and columns. What is unstructured data? Most of the time, applied data. Neither the client understands what is entered, neither we understand what is entered, and then we have to match the gap. Or let's put it on the jovial, you know, even, I, even though I told it on jovial, no? let us say, some statistics available in various newspaper reports. That's an unstructured. Facebook. Facebook. Data available on Facebook. That's unstructured. Did you know using Excel you can draw all the data which is there in your Facebook account into Excel sheet? That is possible by click of a button. Go to data. Go to from external source. You will find that option called from Facebook. 
Give your username and password, your entire data will come there. But please make sure that your pass password is changed until afterwards. <laughs> For reasons which all of us we have heard of. So your structured data could be sales, it could be payment, it could be payroll. You know, one of the most structured in some organizations, the highly structured in many organizations. Inventory records, financial reports, accounting software, database, spreadsheets, etc. It could even be your GST software, your, your income tax software, etc. All of those come under this one. On the flip side, we have the unstructured data. Email, instant messages. Your WhatsApp history is also a unstructured data. And many a times those have been used in forensic investigation and analysis. Payment text description. What is this? Narration. Narration is a wonderful, again, unstructured data is a good rich source. I'll give you instances where you will be able to use it. Corporate document repositories, news feeds, etc. etc. So we have understood what, we have understood why and we understood what is data. I think now we need to move to the next phase. What are these analytical tools? So these analytical tools could be as simple as these. Your Excel sheets are the simplest analytical tools. And Microsoft has got so many features. You just go to this tab called data in Microsoft. You will find a plethora of information. And in fact, to solve this problem, Microsoft has come up with one more analytics tool called Power BI, Power Business Intelligence, BI is Business Intelligence. And that's an add-on available if you have Office 365 or 2016. Probably you can enable that, those of you who are using it. And if you are using a slightly older version of Excel, I think it's time we upgrade it because the more we are re remain latest, we get to know what the trends are and can simplify how things we are doing. Next could be a general audit software. It could be an add-in for an Excel or the same general audit software could be a separate tool. For instance, I am not sure if you have heard of you know tools such as you know, uh, you know, IDEA, ACL or you know, our, uh, we have a few tools which are made by uh, chartered accountants called as CAT, ECAT, PCAT. All these are various types. So few of them are add-on to Excel, meaning you will find in the Excel multiple options, file, data, insert, one of the fields will be cat. That is basically what they are referring to as general account. On the other end, it could be a standalone software, you have to load the data and you can start analyzing. And then of course you have application software, these are sometimes inbuilt, Tally has something which is inbuilt, probably a little later I will draw those relevance. And specialized audit software, some cases it is embedded in your banking applications, in your core banking systems etc. This is where you will find these specialized details. So we are now understood what are the various tools. Now what are the various steps? I know that these are the tools, the next thing is, are there any steps? Yes. Any data analytics when you do, there are about 4 to 5 steps which you need to follow. The first is called curate. The term curate means what? Cleansing the data. Many a times the data given by the client, most common issue you would have find. Date is in American format or some other format. Yes or no? Or some dates in American format, some dates in Indian format, some dates in some other country format. That means we need to get a data into a consistent order and that is what is called curate. Transforming the data into a usable structure. And mind you, my dear friends, you again don't require complicated software or complicated formula. It is possible using simple functions. You know, the another example is if you are using any of these bank uh, uh, companies, when you ask for a customer balance, they will give you in a notepad. And you will find that the pages it will run into so many uh, you know, vertical columns that it is very difficult for you to analyze. Converting text to columns in Excel is a classical example of curate. You are getting the data into a proper shape. Next comes profiling. When I use the word profiling, here I am referring to grouping the data. Can I group the data to understand what are the common attributes? All right? For instance, I just want to group the data or I just want to know statistics about data. You know, what is the begin date, what is the last date, end date, etc. Instead of me doing all of that, I ask my software to do it. See, today is the era where we say, okay, Google, tell me this. 
Okay Siri, tell me this. Or Amazon, Amazon Alexa, play me this song. Why can't we say, Okay cat software, give me this. And that is why we need to go. And because tools are becoming more and more advanced, the reason the data sets are becoming more and more standardized. Next comes the powerful function called Analyze. This is where you try to analyze the data. You may probably extract samples. You may probably, you know, try to take some inputs from it. You may try to identify something called outlier. Example, how many transactions are more than three times of your sale? How many transactions are ten times more than your purchase? You know, there was this interesting case when we were doing an audit for e-com. One of the product alone, which was typically your pen drives, pen drives or flash drive, you know, this was about four or five years back. It used to be one or two vendors in a particular region used to order 100 or 150 different you know, types of pen drives. You know, 10 pen drives of 10 GB, uh, whatever, 8 GB, 16 GB, all possible things they used to order. And this was done only by one particular user. And when we thought, you know, why is this user behaving very weird with this particular thing, then we understood that the e-com company had a huge amount of discount on pen drives. This was a business to business vendor. He went, procured everything, sold it to customers in his retail market over his Kirana store. Now why did the e-com company do this? So that it thought it will benefit customers. And was the customer able to benefit? No. Correct? So that's a classical example to say how we are able to analyze. And of course this function you can also apply, you know, I am just trying to extrapolate cases of fraud. Recently there was a fraud which happened in IRCTC servers where certain set of users used to get a privileged access on the IRCTC systems and they used to get the Tatkar tickets much before than others. And we all know how difficult it is to get the Tatkar ticket. Correct? 10 o'clock the Tatkar window opens, 10 to it is sold out. I am not sure if uh, movie tickets are also sold, sold out so quickly. Correct? So that's where we are looking into. Probably you can use these techniques. Let's go a little further. Now this is where I do some bit of detailed, in-depth review. I can investigate. I can query the data. I can try to go into the details. Correct? I can do some statistical queries, RSF, Belfort law. I'll explain both of these when we are dealing with it a little later. And last is documentation. Documentation is nothing but <coughs> gathering the evidence, getting the files together, numbering the files, you know, creating an index sheet. The bigger problem is we have 10 sheets, sheet 1, sheet 2, sheet 3, sheet 3 within bracket sheet 1, sheet 3 within bracket sheet 2, we don't know which is what sheet. Have you ever bothered to look into it and one year later assessment comes, we start searching, oh this is the sheet, this could be the sheet. Why can't we approach a documentation procedure and that's basically what these tools are. Alright? So, we have understood the basics, now I want to move into certain specific functions and how you can use it. Before that, if there is any questions, I would like to take it. No questions indicates two things, understood everything, understood nothing. I always presume the first option. Thank you. Let's go a little further. Let us presume you had a file such as this for doing your audit. And what is this file? It's a simple procurement. It's a very simple procurement file where you have your PO, PO number, vendor code, vendor name, material, unit price, etc. etc. I just extracted some basic data, anonymized this data and I thought we should analyze this. But tomorrow, if you are doing a procurement or purchase audit, we already know what are the standard functions we apply. Let's go one level. Now let us think what are the areas where frauds could occur. Correct? With that as a mindset, let us probably ask a few questions to ourselves. What is one of the areas where frauds could occur? An open question. Repeated. <coughs> Repeated after. Repeated payments? That's a classical case. Repeated payments is a classical case, meaning one invoice paid multiple times next. Pricing, correct? Pricing is one other area. Next. Credit limit. One of the other interesting cases. Credit limit. How much can I maximum have a credit limit? Correct? Another one more case probably. You do want of time, I'll probably rest it to another example. Vendor creation. That's another case. 
Correct? So we already know a few areas where we would have to test. Now let us see how we could use a, the power of cat to test it in a very simple manner. The first check which I did is a very simple check called identify duplicates. Correct? I have just taken a screenshot from a standardized uh, you know, cat tool just to say that you know it's a, as simple as this. Do you know what the data is? I just went to the tool, chose one option point, identify duplicates. It asked me to tell which are the areas. I chose give me only pure number. I want to know are there pure num duplicate pure numbers. It's a very simple check. And will it be able to give me the answer? The answer is yes. Correct? It will be able to give me a highlight and tell me these are all the duplicate PO numbers. End of the story. Now the problem with PO numbers is not just identifying the duplicate. What if there is a gap? Many times when we are doing an audit, let's try to take this for a GST audit. When we do this for a GST audit, what happens? I have multiple invoice numbers given to the multiple clients. Very good. Same invoice number given to 2-3 clients. Why? Manual system of accounting, somewhere there is an issue. And once you upload in the GST portal, it says error in GSTR1. Can I do something much before? And that is what a simple check suggests. Can I do this in Excel? Yes. File menu, conditional formatting, identify duplicates. As simple as that. But let us go into slightly more detail. I want to identify duplicate purchase orders. Can I identify <coughs> duplicate purchase order? One step over. But I want to identify what are the gaps in purchase order. That means I have purchase order number one. I do not have purchase order number two. I directly go to purchase order number three. And what do I do? The same thing. I already have the number series over here. You can find it over here. Correct? So I have the number series over here. And all that I do is. So I have my number series here. All that I have to do is. I use a function called character gaps. So it tells me. Analyze this column B. And the moment I analyze column B it says. It, the beauty of that is it is also telling how the attribute is. It says C, C, C meaning three characters. And then it says N, 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 N. Now the same thing if you have to do using Excel sheet. Split text to columns. Sort it. This is equal to that. That plus this. This minus this. Idli is equal to samba. Samba is equal to chutney. And then you will get the answer. <coughs> meaning what can be done through a circumvented route you could try to solve it in a much easier manner and that is where the beauty of this is are you clear with it? does it make sense? alright so let's look into another area where else do you think you can apply this identify gaps? where else do you think you can apply this identification of gaps? any place where there is auto numbering you can apply this simple any place where there is auto numbering, you can apply this. Example, checkbook. Correct? A simple example could be a checkbook or a check leaf numbers. Whether those narrations have been factoring them. Another example could be sales in the case of GST, the invoice numbers. Correct? Or procurement orders as what we did. Let's go a little further. I also realized that I have a small challenge. The challenge is that one of the employees has entered the sales or the purchases. Very good. But what is the guarantee that he has entered it correctly? A. B. What if he has entered an additional digit? C. What if an unapproved price is entered? At one shot can I identify and that is where we have a very interesting function. It is called relative size factor. The beauty of this RSF is, it calculates the difference between the first highest and the second highest and also looks into the ratio between them. For instance, in this file which I have, I know that the maximum price is one column, the second highest price is on another column. And what do I do? I try to compare both. It has given me what is called as relative variance and relative size factor in the last column. Now what does this indicate? Probably let us try to introspect this. 
if you carefully look into it, I have a material code. One of the prize entered was 167. The other prize entered was 17. What do you think would have happened here? A very simple thing. Option number one, products were only 17, but he was entering it, he entered one extra 6. Possible? This is called as a addition. Alternate scenario, let's presume the price itself was 170, 165. But he forgot to enter a 0. This is called truncation. Uh, error we can identify. Forget that. Can I identify a fraud? Maybe yes. What if the larger value item is disguised in something so that you are not able to identify? Now if you apply the traditional techniques, I know material code is ordered. But will I be able to know this material code has the issue? <coughs> well, that's a question. And that is where relative size factor is a fantastic tool when it comes to audit. Assuming you want to do this by your own, very good, you can do it. How will you do it? In Excel, prepare a pivot and then you have an option in Excel to say summarize by the maximum value. But how will you summarize by the second maximum value? You have to write one more set of formula. Correct? So that is where the challenge comes. The first highest we can always identify. How do I identify second highest for everything? Then you have to sort. Imagine how big your data will go. Correct? And that is where I am not saying it is not possible. But the fact what I am saying is, it is much more easier than you use cat based techniques. Are you now able to understand how to use cats? Correct? Let's go into the next function. A software which is the closest to our heart. Correct? Day in and day out we use this. How many of them have used, all of us have seen the screen, get your tally, right? that's a fundamental screen, you know, the basic screen. There is something called this. What is that? Audit and compliance. Happen to click on that? If you had there, or if you did click there, you would find one option like this. And under that, there is a very interesting option called audit analysis. I go a little further, I drill down, I identify what is called relative size factor. <coughs> Let's see how the example looks like. It is a sample data, you know, just to give you a list. Can you find those two cell which are blue in color? Correct? I'll let me zoom it for the benefit of the audience who are sitting in the rear seats. I made payments and please look into the ledger name. Electricity charges. Correct? And it is told what is my relative size factor. How did it calculate? Basically divided the first highest and second highest. That's all simple. It's a proportion. Now if you pick up this and you will figure it out. Probably the trend says electricity bill was always 5000, but suddenly it is increased to why? Maybe purchase of UPS is entered, maybe security deposit, correct, as sir rightly said, or for all you know, some other head has pushed it here <coughs> electrical repairs and uh, you know, electrical fittings, something which has to be go to, go into capital, and this you can identify in a does it make sense now? How to use RSL? Now, but then, some people came up with a smart strategy. <coughs> Fraudster said, okay, you will anyways analyze the first highest and the second highest. If the gap is huge, you will catch hold of it. So what I will do? To reduce the gap, I will pass multiple entries. <coughs> the previous case, what we said? 17 and 167. So what I will do? I will pass 150, 135, 140, multiple entries. That is where one interesting perspective you can do and that is called maximum variance factor. So what is maximum variance factor? Next level of it. Instead of taking the first two highest, take the first highest and the least. That means you are simply doing what is called as a range. And these are basic statistical tools. If you remember I told you analytics is not highly advanced tools. It is all basic. That's basic tools or basic functions. 
And what does this do? Let's see what the results are. I have this product. Look at this. The maximum unit price is 1106 and the minimum unit price is 16. It simply means that the person who was entering the data, he was somewhere, he did some. Correct? And there you find in the last column what is called MVF, maximum variance, maximum variance factor percentage. Look at that, 6000 percentage. Almost close to 7000 is actually, 6800. Or slightly below that, 1275. Why? Maybe in the case of the second product, he should have entered 11 and 8, whereas he did 11 with an extra C. Or for all you know, he might have actually wanted to manipulate. Correct? So this is one function which you could consider using. Moving a little further. We always like data in graphical format. And I'm sure you have seen you know, various reports of you know, these large companies, they have very fancy graphs etc. The beauty of graph is, at one shot you can identify what the issue is. Let's see how it is. And this is called trend lines. This is an option available in Excel itself. Typically your 2013 version and above I think you have this. Or you could take the help of an additional tool. Now what does it do? Very simple. Arrange the data, you know, various types of trends you can identify. In this case I told the system, please arrange the data in chronological order and give me the trend. And what did it tell me? It gave me this. My highest was 167. And my next highest was 16.7. Means what? I am sure that decimal has come accidentally or the decimal is forgotten in one of the places. Look into that B1681. It follows a reasonably downwards trend. That means only one product is high, the stall is low. Let's look into that other 31.11 and then comes to 25.33 and 20.33 and you know it keeps on. That means you have trends which you can get to know at a snapshot, at a click of a button. And I'll tell you one very interesting case, we use this in one of the companies, you know, when we are doing this non-performing asset analysis, banking. We were appointed as a strategy audit of one of the branches. So we simply took this dump and we were trying to analyze. What we did was, we took the advances balance for 5 quarters. What are the 5 quarters? Previously reported quarter, which was presuming March 17th. <laughs> Then we took on June 17, September 17, December 17, March 18. I had five quarters of data. I simply put everything next to each other. Simple copy paste. I pushed this trend. All those which were giving a downward trends, I removed it. Why? It meant that they have been paying the balances. Because no balances from them. All those which remained flat means what? Some issue? Highlight? Check what it is. The problem with data analytics is sometimes it gives you false positives. Out of this when we analyzed, we got to know 10 of these loan accounts were had a monitoring period. Possible education loan, housing construction loan. He said, okay, very good, I will remove the false positives. I went to little ahead. I was able to catch hold of one of these accounts which had a downward or an upward trend. I said, something is fishy in this. Then what I told? I told the bank manager, please give me this customer account bank statement. He gave this bank statement. Again, I didn't apply any rocket science formula. Closing balance was there. Every customer account has closing balance. I applied an Excel graph on the closing balance, a trend line. And I said, give me based on every 15 days. It gave me a sort of a very suspicious trend. And the trend was, only two days before the due date or the before the month end or the quarter end, the payments used to come and the entire quarter the payments used to come. That means what? Bank manager had some sort of a... Correct. So that means these are cases by a click of a button we are able to identify. What took hours or years? No. You cannot verify so much because we are dealing with 
digital data and it's becoming very very cumbersome and that's why this is an advantage. <coughs> Let's look into another interesting area. And this is called a Benford's law. A Benford's law is something which is exclusively used for forensic detection of identified fraud numbers. All of us know that any number will begin between 1 to 9. That means every number has 1 by 9th probability of occurrence. Simple math. 1 by 9 is equal to 11.11%. That means every number in a particular file has 11% probability of occurring as the first digit. Similarly, second digit, third digit, fourth. Now, what this Benford, a statistician, he did was, he said that is not always the case. Many a times, in a sort of a frequency distribution, it may so happen that the initial numbers tend to come more than the later numbers. Which means, the number 1 is repeated many a times than number 2. Number 2 is repeated more number of times than number 3 in a normal distribution. Which meant the number 9 was the least repeated. When I use the word repeated, I am referring to any number in the data string beginning with that. So what he said was, for example, this is what he said. If number 1 appears as a significant digit 30% of the time and number 9 is less than 5% of the time. Alternatively, if it was a normal distribution, it will be 11.1%. So, it, it is basically does a prediction. It also has a facility where you can predict on second digit, third digit, etc. If I have to graphically put it, he gave it something like this. He said, this is where a number 1 should come 30.1% of the time. Number 2 should appear 17.6, whereas number 9 is just 4.6. The same thing you apply on the data set. If number 3 appears as 40%, whereas number 3 should ideally appear as 12%. That means the data may have been manipulated. And this is typically possible in a case of procurement audit. And a Benford law is one wonderful test case where you can use in the case of procurement. So let's see where we can apply this Benford law. Credit card transactions. Remember, if a card has been cloned or has been susceptible to an attack, the probability of the transaction occurring with the same number is high. You will always make 2500 rupees in all. Who? The first one. Whereas, if we analyze that on a normal table, if I put it into this graph, you will find that 2500 it should appear. 17.6 percent, that means number beginning with 2 should appear 17.6 percent, it is appearing 35. That means filter all the transactions which are beginning with 2000 and you have your detailed review which you can do. Please keep in mind when you are looking into forensic or fraud based investigation, you are doing something, sometimes you are going into 100 percent verification as well. Purchase orders, a classical scenario, POs, correct, the amount involved in POs. You can apply this. Loan data, you know, you could also give it for customer refunds, you can also give it for cash deposits. 49,000, 49,000, 49,000, 49,000. You can easily figure out by the trends. Something is suspicious. But where you cannot apply is could be where there is a fixed outcome or my price which is based on butter pricing. You know that 499, 399, I know that the trend will always be within that. That means the law cannot be. So this is a very, very useful step or a useful tool which you could probably have. Let's see if I have to apply this on a file. Okay. So we got some data like this. Now what does this mean? Sorry. So as per my analysis, from the procurement file, that number 1 was supposed to appear 30.1% of the time whereas it appeared 16.7% of the time number 2 had 
at 17.6 which is 15 which is okay for me but look at number 3 12.5 became 30.3 if I compare digit 1 and digit 3 it is almost reverse what is 16.7 over there the reversal impact you will find it in 7 that means what as an auditor I have to filter all the transactions beginning with 1 and 3 through my analysis don't you think this became easier? In contrast, if I have to verify 1000 records, this is this. Probably only 30 or 40 records. Don't you think it's easier? So that is where as an auditor you can save time using this. <coughs> then came this very interesting analysis which we did for an e-com company. What had happened was, there was a typical scenario or there was a typical case where the company procured from the same vendor the same material but I wanted to check did he supply it at different prices that is where now if I have to use my traditional excel how will I identify it? filter for all unique items use a pivot from pivot identify remove duplicate so much of circus I simply told my system or you know the tool please give me all cases you know it has an option I could choose any of them which are the fields which are same I could choose vendor name, material code etc so in this case I chose only two fields what are they? vendor name and material code for all, for all you know you could have chosen even material code and then I chose give me the unit for difference is unit price that means what? I chose two fields to be same, one field to be different, did the comparison and what is the result? I got to know some interesting statistics. Let's see that. There was this company, XYZ Couriers, whatever, same material code, but you will find unit price was different. But then I also found their location of shipment was different. But then, Bangalore and Chennai being close to each other should not have 15 rupees of price variance. <coughs> or maybe I had a centralized PO where at all places it is supplied at a common rate. Click on the button, I can catch hold of it. Now the same check you can apply on a different method. And what is the different method you can apply? Check same vendor code, different vendor name. Correct? Check same material code different price yes or no <coughs> check same material from different vendors different price multiple combinations such as this in fact here itself you get to find any possible permutation combination one shot you can identify this and that is where the beauty of this function lies <coughs> are you with me on this let's quickly move a little further an interesting match called as the fuzzy match now what many a times happens, I am sure all of us know that when a client or a party wants to duplicate or he wants to replicate a transaction what he normally does is he will give a space he will give an additional alphabet A, B he will give an additional semicolon and he will pass the entry why? because system has a check the duplicate it will reject it now what happens many a times is additional letters and additional characters if they are added it becomes a major challenge and how do I try to avoid this? And that is where, let's look into this. I have a narration which says number 93 check printed. Print che printed check to number. Correct check number 93. All that I need to do is, I need to say, please give me this transaction description which is separated by space and give me the duplicates. And the tool or the function can help me give a very interesting result. Look at this. The original data is in the first column, whereas the arranged data in the second column. And after this you can easily do your analysis. One single shot you can identify multiple duplicate payments. And that's where it's powers. And this we used it in many cases of procurement audits. Many cases of procurement audits. We just did the rearrangement. In fact, some people have added an additional alphabet. And alphabet A was the most commonly added alphabet. That also we got. You know, you used to just, even our system was not accepting, you used to pass that and you used to do that. 
and because they had some control which was built, the duplicate invoice you cannot enter, etc. The same thing happens in GST website. If you are downloading, if you are uploading GSTR1, correct? If the invoice number is just duplicate, you can just add an alphabet and it will accept it. There is nothing wrong on the system. But as an auditor, we should know how we can approve it. One more common problem which we get. Many a times, the same names are mentioned. If you carefully look into this, you will find some multiple types of names which are mentioned over here. Same name, different spellings. Can I try to identify and that is where sounds like comes into picture. Sounds like is a function which will tell me that yes, these are all the names which are similar in nature. I simply choose this and I am able to filter which are all the similar names. Can you find it there? All the names, it is able to identify, it's given me one unique character number reference. I have just sorted it after that and I got to know multiple names. Well, this may not be a foolproof technique, but it will definitely help you open your eyes and say, yes, these are possible issues. <coughs> this was the latest case which we did. You know, recently RJ came up with this uh, uh, notice or a notification that said, all the NPA account holders in excess of a particular threshold, you need to have banks are rec we recommend the banks to appoint forensic auditors. So we were doing one of these forensic investigation. We understood that the client has diverted multiple funds. So what we did in this case, we simply used the tally because the data was available in tally because it was too huge. All that we did was I went to the daily balance report in tally of all bank accounts. All the daily balance bank accounts, I took it into one Excel sheet. I collated all of them and I just put a chart. In fact, I cannot bring the chart because it's a too complicated one. I realized that there was this two ledgers where if you see one ledger is being continuously using. But the other ledger only on 31st March is used. And one was a OD account, one was a current account. You know what they are left? In order to show more advances and more income, the current account money was transferred to OD, OD account was transferred to current. Forget this. We compare two more things, which became too huge to push it over here. When we compare a couple of files, we got to know one bank always had upward trend, one bank always had downward trend. Why withdraw from this bank, push it there? Three days later, the cycle will get reversed. We understood that there are multiple transfers between one bank account, another bank account, another bank account. Establishing the trail was the biggest challenge over here. So what did we do? We got all the data into Excel and did a simple function called sort. sort. Sort by date. I got all the transactions. I knew where the cycle moved. But of course, that was a cumbersome procedure because in it they had about 100 transactions. So I had to pick and choose which are the higher ones, etc, etc. That is where probably tools are also available today where you can use those sort of functions as well, related transactions. You know, check if 50,000 transactions, similar amount, similar day, more than 50,000, up to 50,000 on similar day, etc. And that is where CAT becomes very powerful. Alright, so are there any questions? My second phase of the presentation comes to the end where I want you to take, before I go to the third phase, are there any questions before we move to certain specific areas of evaluation? To prevent this, you know, mistakes in the intentionally or at the fraud intention, at least in the purchase order numbering and in the employee code numbering, there is a method we use for that to check digit. Correct. So, but uh, check digit will not always prevent. Check digit more focuses on transposition. If A and if the number was A B C, I accidentally wrote it as A, a C B. Yeah. Immediately system will hide it. Yeah. But it will not prevent me from duplicates. For instance, our PAN. The last digit of a PAN is a check digit. If any of the nine characters I ch interchanged, system will immediately not even go to the income tax database. It will say validation error. Many of the tedious softwares are there. Even our uh, GST softwares are there. The moment you enter the GST number, even one alphabet plus minus you do, it will immediately say this is not this. So there is a limitation. It is there is a limitation. So that is more like an identification. But what it cannot do is check whether they are duplicates. For that you need to deploy additional. 
A simple, even in an Excel sheet, if you just apply the remove duplicate or highlight duplicate, you will get to know what. Any more uh, questions or cases which you have come across before I move to certain specific areas of audit or specific areas of audit system? Yes, ma'am. Did you say that uh, XYZ company in disbursing for loans for CDS, it was some half percent? No. Something you said. Correct. So the program was, uh, it was programmed such and all you told. Correct. But then at the time of disbursement of the loan, definitely the bank manager would have. No, no, this was the case of reversal, madam. This was a case of fixed deposit. When the fixed deposit was there, it merely said senior citizen additional rate. Correct? The system used to calculate the rate on its own. So, assuming 8% was the rate of interest. So, you, you mean the bank manager is not even aware that the rate is... He just prints whatever comes to the system. You ask any bank manager what is it, insists the system gave it. With due respect, I, there are very good, diligent officers whom I have seen. So, this is a case where interest rate had an issue. I am not sure what was there in the fixed deposit receipt. For all you know, the FT would have taken 5 years back. It keeps on getting renewed, right? So, in that case, what is the challenge? Some people come right on the reverse of the FD, all the details and go. Some people don't even bother. You know, they say that NAS are the original receipt, it serves the purpose. That's where the challenge is. Any other specific area which I could probably take? Yes, sir. In that case, the system would have a differentiation between the individual and the individual. Correct. That, that rule was not there. So, the rule should have been, there are two rules which systems use. Rule number one is, they can either say, if it is an individual based on the Q2 rule. Rule number two which I have seen in certain companies, they go based on PAN digit. We all know that PAN to fourth letter is T, meaning individual, based on the derivative rules. Many companies have done it. That's an additional thing. But what is the guarantee that an incorrect PAN is entered? <laughs> That's a million dollar question. See, there are techniques always available across the globe. But a person who is intelligent enough will always try to change or circumvent. Alright, any more specific areas which I could take? Yes, sir. Sir, the example of what you have just explained, there is two. So, you have actually explained the specific price option. Correct. I just taken price as an example. Yeah. So, whether it is possible to use these techniques for other areas? Same thing. Okay. Probably let's talk about same, same, different. I have the same employee ID or same person. Definitely. See, as long as you have the data in numerical form, you can do it. The same method, I just took this as an example because exhaustive, I cannot go for it. In fact, that is what I am going to do next. What are the types of checks you can apply? By where are the areas? Just to give an example, if you are doing a payroll, you can check whether duplicate bank accounts are there. You know, things like that. So, those checks you can apply. If duplicate bank account is there, we have to identify how is that possible. First of all, no person can have the same, no two people can have the same bank. Right? So, some checks and balances like that we have. Any more questions which I could take in? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, one example you said about some econ company audit where the, one of the particular purchaser purchased many types of uh, pen drives and they sold it. Uh, even if you see the Nandini milk parlor, many agents buy it and then sell it for one day extra. Is there any clause that they should not be sold? What is the fraud in it? No, the fraud over here is the person was that the intention of the e-com company was to ensure end consumer is getting the benefit. Now what happened when this fellow placed the entire order, one guy itself took the entire product and he sold it. That is one side of the story. A genuine customer who wants it to go and buy that, the, within two minutes of the offer, it said all sold out. Now assuming you gave, somebody gave an offer saying that this is the discounted price, within two minutes they say it is shut out. All of us are frustrated. I am looking from that angle. It was not a fraud or it was neither a law. But here I was evaluating from the operating effectiveness perspective. From a customer perspective, it is a challenge because the customer when he loses it, because the company was focused more on losing out customers, potential customers. Same thing applies for IRCTC also. Sorry? IRCTC also. Yes sir, absolutely right. In fact, that was the next example which I thought I would draw. IRCTC also. All genuine persons like you and I, we want to look at it get. Hardly we get it. And I'm sure you have got these uh, people who will say, Sir, we are an agent, you have to pay 300, 400 rupees extra, guaranteed ticket will give you. Guaranteed Tatkal. Guaranteed Tatkal. I never knew there was a scheme like that. <laughs> Alright, in fact, 
you would be surprised the same thing happened with the National Stock Exchange. TTD also. TTD said. Recently that led to scam which happened. <laughs> Alright. So you name it anywhere there will be some sort of a or a loophole. That is why sir, at the end of the day one very good advantage is data is available in digital form. The biggest thing most of the clients say, sir, this is very good requirement but we don't have the feature in our software. Or that data we cannot extract it. My difference, I would say, majority of the times the person who is answering that he does not know how the software works. Any software follows a concept called RDBMS, Relational Database Management System. Which means data is stored in rows and columns. Even tally stores in rows and columns. You can pull out the entire tally data of a ledger. It has maintenance close to about 500 different fields or attributes for a ledger. You can identify and extract it into Excel. Many a times I have had cases where from SAP we have written queries, we have got it to Excel, from that we have used it to analyze it for. So the question is on all, all about how you use it and where you want to take it. Any other uh, specific queries? Before I move to certain specific areas, or because again in the last five minutes I would want to leave it for an open house where you can ask any questions. Or you feel that any analytics or any fraud based you know, experience you have encountered, you can always share. Okay, then move a little bit. Now, what are a few areas of evaluation? Typically, from a forensic audit perspective. A few transactions which all of us could consider. Accounts payable is one single area where majority have it. There are a few examples, instances. Privileged access, one dangerous thing. What is privileged access? Admin access. Or some special type of users have overriding access. And that becomes a risk. Vulnerability management. You know, some sort of a risk management. General ledger. Depreciation or anything which doesn't fall under the payment procurement concept. Travel and expenses. A big area for huge frauds. Especially the auto fare. <laughs> I have had a client where, you know, recently we were doing some sort of a check and balance and uh, the, uh, an employee submitted a claim of 50 rupees auto per day because he was in a different, uh, he was in an original one location working in a different location for three months period. 20,000 was the audit, auto fee claim bill. Now, how was an auditor or as an auditor, I immediately pointed out there was a lapse in the policy. Correct? So that way you need to target and look into it. Terminations, another area of payroll, cash accounts, so let's look into certain specific. First is payable audit. Now what are the checks which you can apply in a payable? When I use the word payable, I am referring to procurement. Pareto analysis. What is a Pareto? It basically identifies who are the large buyers, you know, grouping. We call it as an ABC analysis. Correct? You can use your relative size factor, maximum variance factor, that's one more check which you can use here. Payment voucher, duplicate checks. A huge number of duplicate checks you can perform here. And procurement is one file. If you happen to get it, that's a fantastic file for you to do every experiment. And that's also a good way for you to get used to the software. Next, vendor payment relative size factor test. Many a times there is one area which you can examine. Please check the bank account of the vendor. Especially the vendor master. Who has the access to edit and modify? Many a times, creation of bank account, full strict controls are there. Modification, no controls. And also, you can check whether are there maker checker. If maker checker is that reasonable amount of comfort, maker checker not there, huge risk. Because many a times, it is done by one guy, and in fact, he is the same guy who approves the bill also. And he is sometimes who is the passenger. So, all these are areas where you have. Of Let's look into a little further. Segregation of duties. Same requester, approver. I think in SAP we call it as park and post, right? Those of you who used SAP. Park and post, maker checker, uh, authorizer, all those things. Vendor payments with blank memo descriptions. Your narration is appearing as nil. All that you have to do is sort by nil or sort by filter by nil. You will be able to catch it. Duplicate vendor payments. You can use functions such as exact match. What is exact match? Invoice number should exactly match. If invoice number does not match, 
clearly you have to raise an alert, raise a flag itself. So that is one area which you can look into. Any other functions, these are just a sample, these are not exhaustive, all of us know that. Uh, any other areas which you can uh, share based on your experience? In a typical uh, procurement cycle, these are just a few extracts which I have mentioned. In either case of duplicate checks. Okay. Next, general ledger. General ledger is again your normal GL balances. Correct? Again, you can do your Pareto narration, non standard narration. You know, you can have certain words, narration containing. You know, only numbers, special characters, space, all of those. High value round numbers, huge, you know, large transactions which are of round, rounded off. Correct? So that's another area. Splitting of voucher. This is a very interesting case which we did. So one of the cases we did an audit, the managing director had a power to purchase up to 50 lakh rupees. And uh, anything above 50 lakh, the US office had to approve. Now what this managing director did was he wanted to buy a Mercedes Benz. And we all know that the price range is anywhere between 40 and 50 lakhs. This gentleman placed an order. Great. Then what he said was obviously the invoice price is much more. So what he told, place three purchase orders. One purchase order for the basic value of the car. Second purchase order for road tax, insurance, all those add-on things. And third for the fittings. As a result, what happened? System easily accepted it. US department was monitoring. Okay, less than 50 lakh rupees family did it. But then, when you see that on aggregate basis, you will actually figure it out. <coughs> that is where you need to also identify. You remember I told you same same duplicate or same same checks? Here you also need to do aggregation plus duplication. Aggregation plus you know, increment, decrement, etc. And that is another technique which you can apply. That is one something which you can do. Next, payments on weekends or payments made on bank holidays. Now, all of us know that there are so many bank holidays. Now. Correct that uh, every second Saturday, fourth Saturday. Correct? And then, uh, of course, each location has its own holiday. I think last week you were, Friday was a holiday in Bangalore as well as Monday. Because Guru Nanak Jayanti and Tanakaras Jayanti. Correct? So, like that, things keep on changing. So if you can get a calendar, simply link that. These are all holidays. Why payments have happened? Of course, some cases, national holidays, special payments will happen. And today, this IMPS transaction, it is one dangerous thing. We are not able to understand anything in the bank statement. Neither the client knows, neither the auditor knows, neither the person who remitted knows. And the only way to verify an IMPS is that SMS. And who stores SMS? Extremely difficult. At least UPI transaction, that is Unified Payment Interface, some reference number is there. It says at the rate something. IMP is becoming the... Ah, difficult sir, again. Problem is incoming IMP is how will you get it? Every case we have to go and outgoing IMP is at least some details we have. Incoming IMP is the problem. Correct? So issues such as this. Next, vouchers with blank references, blank narrations, you know, required fields missing, etc. And let's look into a very interesting case, payroll. Now one more area where frauds happen. Post employees, that is what happened in the case of Satyam. Attendance. Correct? Attendance, unnecessary it is there. One simple check you have to do sir. Go download from PF registry. Today everything is available on online. What is it? Unified uh, EPF portal is there, right? Just go there, download the list of employees. Compare that with your HR database. One excellent control that is. Probably you can consider adding that into your audit program. Very good control. You can get to know whether he is a ghost employee or an actual employee. Because even if they may create a ghost employee, our fellows are smart enough that they will not pay the statutory taxes. We don't have so sincere fraudsters in India still. Correct? So, which would mean that invariably one place they are. And again, the beauty of this uh, EPF portal is you need to enter the UAN, I think other. Yeah. Correct? So, some sort of a check is there. So, we can identify. Second, the employee master itself with their PAN, you can verify. Correct? And payroll register with HR master verify. Recently, I was doing one bank uh, IT audit. They were having access. It was a typical one portal which is accessed across the uh, India. One employee ID or one employee had access in multiple branches. 
Is it always that possible? And of course, it's not the core banking, it is more an analytical reporting feature. Then I ask them, sir, how is one employee having access in multiple branches? That to what? Not even next to each other. One is in north, one is in south, one is in east, one is in west. I thought these are truly Indian covered entire places. Then I asked them simple question, sir, why is it like this? Then we did a detailed check the last four places where event access is not remote. Luckily, this was not a this was not a transaction entering system. To that extent, that extent was good, but it was reviewed. I can always draw review, review reports. Correct? Which is still the risk. What if he is given some uh, previous loan to the old guy, he is right, trying to take some information, transfer the loan. All permutation combinations are possible today. Correct? So that is one more area. Multiple payments to same employee. Uh, this is available in Excel. Multiple payments to the same person you can calculate in Excel. That option I told you, you know, audit analysis. Under that you just go for repeated transaction. Beautiful tool. It will say rent paid 13 times. You know where that is. Salary paid 12, 13 times or 14 times. Sometimes it happens last month, arrears, etc. But anything more than that, you know what it is. Right? At least it helps us to identify. Right? So that is where analytics can come into picture, especially in these sort of areas. Next. You know, all of this attendance has become very complicated. Yes, sir. The flexibility of the hours working. Correct. And working from home. Also. That is one big challenge. Sir. Working from yeah. home is a major challenge. Yeah, major challenge. It is very, very complicated. We don't, we, we have no guarantee whether the employee is working from home or not. First of all, in school only homework is not go. <laughs> Correct, you are trusting an employee, you know, go to all the work. With due respect, it has created a lot of flexibility. We need to appreciate that. But on the other hand, as an auditor, how will I gain a control? We have no other option but to rely upon the supervisor's approval. Nothing we can do. But of course, we can do some trend analytics. You know, most of these IT companies have a concept called efforts. Time sheets versus effort sheets. So that and this you can try to match it and we can get it. So there are sheets of logging time. Ah, but the only problem is logging in is uh, again depends. I'll tell you some companies what they've smartly done. Whoever has a work from home enabled, they have the Skype for business. The time the Skype for business he is accessing, he is doing it. What our fellow does, he app switches it on, goes for bar, finishes all his daily morning routine, finishes everything, eats pizza, dosa, everything, comes back to place. You cannot catch it up. That is where we have the point. Yeah, that's as far as your payroll is concerned. Next, month on month payroll trend, very good control. Month on month payroll trend, very good control. Simple checks. You can just do the compile file. In Excel itself, there is one function called for comparison. You know, there is one function for comparison, combining, etc. In Excel, if you go to data, I think it's called consolidate. You just click on Excel consolidate under data, you can compare both the things, it will give you numbers next to each other. Ideally, consolidate what it will do, it will do A plus B, but it will give the numbers next to each other. You add one more column, it will do A minus B, that's all. Or make one column, multiply into minus one, automatically it will give you. So, quick checks like this is possible. Next, incorrect pay, uh, payments, especially that uh, LWP, uh, what is that? Leave, uh, leave without pay and uh, loss of pay. These are two things which are very, very tricky. Especially if you are doing that payroll audit, you can try to go into intricacies of this. One area where a good possibility where you will get a lot of analytical things. Correct? So identify employees receiving full time payment, you know, various departure dates, etc. Next, employees who have not taken leave. This is one more interesting thing. You know, employees who have not taken leave because it may also indicate that, please understand, nobody is so dedicated that every day you come to office. One of the banks, this happened. One fellow every day morning 8 o'clock used to be there in the office, every day morning 8 p.m. only used to leave the office. He thought full sincere and that fellow was IT administrator. Small cooperative bank. Whatever he wrote it, went to the bank and passed one simple entry. Debit interest expenditure, credit sorry, uh, debit interest expenditure, credit savings bank account. Interest expenditure for the bank is expense. Savings bank account is that fellow's income. Being narration, now narration, you can catch out of it. And this one was smart, next time what he did, he copied the previous company's narration. Because most of the time, banks have the same narration, especially for their interest. Correct? They have a common word they use. This fellow used it. How will you identify in all these cases? Only if you do the interest versus deposit. Remember that rule which I told you in the initial? Right? So that's why you can use it. 
potential duplicate employees. Again, same, same, different. Same employee number, same location, you know, multiple checks are made. One very, very interesting area. Travel. The number of Ola and Uber claims today companies are, you know, employees are submitting. Left, right and center they are submitting. Nobody even bothers to verify from and to. Some companies have done, I have seen them, they have come up with one very interesting option. They have entered into tie up with Ola and Uber. Where, by the, you know, from this place to this place alone, if that fellow books it, you give, the, give us the bill. All other cases, you put it into that fellow's account. Smart. What? Simple analytics. Correct? So, these are ways in which people are trying to transform businesses. So, think about these in all your clientele and etc. Next, trend analysis of travel expenses. Previous quarter versus this quarter. I found a very interesting trend in one of the cases. The employee used to always claim travel bill, along with travel bill, he used to uh, flight bill, along with that flight bill, he always used to claim cab charges. And we all know cab charges to the airport is at least about 500, 800 to 1000 today. I think the price is skyrocketing. But this fellow, for three months continuously, only travel bill, flight bill is there, cab charges is not there. Simple comparison. That and this is nowhere related. But do the check. See how you can catch hold of it. Correct? So travel is one terrific area where you can do multiple things. Next, frequent travel validation. Every month is traveling. Every week is traveling. Maybe some cases, yes. Sir. But every time it's happening, something suspicious. Next, frequent weekend travels. One unique bucket. He travels only on weekend. So weekend, first of all, no. IT companies, they don't even open the laptop. Five days, they are busy with office or they are stuck in the road. Traffic jam, especially in Bangalore. <laughs> Two places where they work. Road, office. Correct? And the rest of the time, Saturday, Sunday, they don't know. They, they are in the bed, sleeping or whatever. They are hardly working. But weekend it happens. Of course, some cases, pressure environment, etc. But if weekend some things are there, something to work. Next. Delay in submission of claim bills. This is one more case. Last year claim, I am submitting this year. In fact, I have told all very simple method. If your employee is telling that, you know, last month claim or two months back or one year back claim I am giving here, simply tell, put the blame on GST. As per GST law, it is not permitted. Yes. All the employees are now submitting claim. Whether it is permitted or not, GST tax will discuss it separately. But see the way, you know, people are able to bring that transformation and that is possible. And how will you identify? Simple, just do the comparison. Date of claim submission versus date of travel is equal to this cell minus this cell. In fact, you can do aging analysis also on it. How old he is submitting the claim. Delay in approval of travel claims. Again, first is the case of submission, second is the case of approval. Next, segregation of travel, or you know, maker checker, etc, etc. Department based. There is one more guess. Who does the top most, who does the bottom most, etc. All these sort of checks and balances you can do. So I just thrown some light on a few areas as a typical for a you know, fraud investigation or forensic auditor, etc. Where you can probably try to look at it. So now that we have all got an idea of that, now what is our action item? What is it that we need to do? Develop a fraud detection program. That's our utmost priority. How do you do that? First, create a profile. This profile has to be unique for every business. This profile has to be for unique for every type of transaction. Why? Sir, the profile is totally different from each line of business. In fact, like how we know in GST law, I think earlier they used to say, you know, entire p and GST will be applicable except through or three. Like that, every item in PNL can be subject to a fraud. See what is the probability. Develop a profile for each of the experiments. Second is this. Quantify the risk. It is very crucial to quantify. Now, how do you quantify this? That's a major challenge in organizations. Risk is quantified, or you have to give a numeric value. It is a product of two or sum of two. Impact, probability of others. Impact could be serious, moderate, lower, very simple, high, low, moderate. Probability of occurrence, again high, low, moderate. But how will you get probability of occurrence? Past experience, industry peers, our experience, etc. Now if you merge both of them, you will get to know 
which has a higher risk, which has a lower risk. Prepare a heat matrix. What is the heat matrix? Which are the risks which fall under extreme high, high probability, high risk? Which are those fall under low? Right? Try to do some profile. Next, perform ad hoc test centers. This is one golden rule in data analytics. Now many of them have seen they wanted to use data analytics. They bought an expensive software. A, they don't use it after that. Or B, they use every possible condition in one test only. It is practically not possible. Start with the basics. You know, try to evaluate few checks and then go into much more detail. Identify areas where repetition is possible. This is a wonderful area. Many audit functions can repeat it. Sir, if not repeat it this year, next year you can repeat, sir. See, today I am telling you, businesses are becoming more and more streamlined. You compare your own client. The way the data used to come 5 years back, we saw how it is coming now. It's much more streamlined. They also understood that keeping proper accounting and financial records is of the relative importance. When data gets streamlined, by click of a button, your system can start performing the activities. And that's why I said, your future is, okay software, do this. And we as auditors will have to interpret that result. System will always give one or two as the answer. It's like a calculator which throws up a number. How do you analyze this? Correct? And you can also be sure that the system will not always give it right. Just to give an example, day before yesterday I was just coming back from the airport. Google Maps said that there is one route which is there. All the fellows went there. Then they, everybody realized that after going there, that it was actually a one way. Why Google Maps did that? Two or three fellows would have, cab fellows would have gone there. Google Maps thought that is the new route. Updated the route for everybody, sent one message. Shorter route available. Everybody chose that. Traffic jam. At what day? 12.30. Not morning. Uh, not not uh, mid-noon. Late night. Correct? That's a perfect example to say in any point of time, Bangalore there's traffic. Correct? Anyways, on the light is coming back. <laughs> Communicate and notify. You have done these trial checks. Communicate. Notify. Because early warnings can be highlighted. You can alert. You can create the puzzle. Click the button. Flag it. And that is where, as auditors, we will be playing a very important role. Next, focus on the broken links and controls. You thought you deployed this technique, but that worked only in one case. It may not work in every case. Try to change, try to replicate, try to modify. And of course, last would be repeat. Keep on repeating because there is no end. Just because you know we do the same checks and balances doesn't mean that every year we don't find something new. We find some other thing. Because at the end of the day, it is driven through human beings. And human beings will definitely make a mistake. Alright? So on that note, a small poll and the poll now is changing. How many of you believe <coughs> that this analytics is now going to be a game changer in audit or for that matter forensic investigation etc. How many of them now with a yes? yes. How many of them with a no? How many of them still confused? <laughs> Alright, so a few important Takeaways are a few important tips which I thought I should be mentioning. A. Invest and experiment with technology. The biggest thing with us is today the time. And this is the best time for us to invest in experiment. You know why? All the clients who are supposed to file on March 31st have already filed the returns this year. Why? Thanks to the government who introduced 5000 rupees penalty. Correct? What was not possible through many years, one penalty was helping us out. Correct? And we have a significant amount of time. We are already in November. December, January, February. We have a significant amount of time. At least 3-4 months. Don't tell GST audit will do for 4 months. Correct? Right? Depends on how procedural aspects, whether the extension and all those things. And in India, beauty is don't take tension. Invariably, there will be extension. <laughs> Somewhere there will be there. Why are necessary to take tension? Right? So, the best time is to invest. Invest, invest now into tools, techniques. Second, adapt and adopt analytics. <coughs> you need to start using it. Okay, sir did or you know the faculty or the speaker showed everything fantastic. Next day morning go back to the same school. Doesn't serve the purpose. I mean you still have the option. But see can I use that? Even one client try to take a sample case. One day decide that I am not going to work. This is what I am going to do. I will try half a day to explore various functions in tally. Forget about any software. 
just a tally, you know, basic functions such as that. Next, build awareness. Most of the time, if you see what our staff are doing, the first year article will do one work which a second year or third year article would have taught him. How did the second year or third year article learn? When he was in first year, his senior would have taught him. The cycle continues. Some of them would have actually got, gained a lot of knowledge. Somebody else would have just told, okay, do they use to this. In fact, when you go meet and speak to them, you will realize there is a huge gap between what that person's knowledge and what is applied. You do I already edited it up for a film. Correct, all attention will come. I was just joking on that, but that is something which you have to do. Very important. Train and develop the skills. There are hundreds of YouTube videos available. Today, YouTube is the biggest university. I keep telling this in every session. The way number of YouTube videos are available, of course, entertainment, all those things keep it in the side. So much amount of knowledge. Now, I make it a point that I hear through YouTube videos when I'm going for my walk, when I'm just driving through my car, you know, I put on the YouTube videos because at least I can hear that. And I know that if there's a very important function or something, if there's something very important, I stop my car and have a look into it, or I stop my walk and have a look into it. Try to see how you can make best use of time because that is where you will be able to derive a lot of things. Next, dedicate time and resources. I keep on re-emphasizing re this. Unless you push in your time. In fact, when I started using CAD, I reasonably had knowledge of Excel. I knew my Excel will give much faster. But I said, no, first let me use a CAD. Even if CAD takes half an hour more, I will use it. Why? Sir, so unless we try it from our end first time, we cannot do it. Many of the times we say, okay, I know this, I ask my staff to implement. No, first let us try this. And the beauty of this is, we can also use simple tips to do it. And the last, change from the tick to the click. No longer as alter, we can keep on affixing the ticks. Right? So it's all changing now. So go for the click oriented approach. So my concluding statement will be, stay updated, else we will soon be updated. Remember, wherever there is a mouse, mouse, there is a camera. Alright? So thank you so much for being a wonderful audience. I hope I put in some thoughts. I hope I put in some uh, areas where you can introspect. Correct? I wanted to keep it crisp and precise and I wanted to give more practical relevance because that is where uh, you will be able to use it. That's my email ID, LinkedIn, I'm available. I have a YouTube channel, you can subscribe to it. I keep on uploading videos very frequently. Correct? Or very basic tips on uh, you know how these sessions or you know how to ex export certain things from Excel to Tally, Tally to Excel, you know various things like that I keep on adding. Probably you know, it's just in the interest of uh, helping my fellow professionals. Alright? Yeah. So on that note, I will open the floor for about a few questions because I think we still have about 10 minutes time. Yes sir? So, yeah, this analytics and all that definitely must be helping in fraud detection and all these things. Yes sir. But as far as, as long as this you know human ingenuity and intelligence is there and all that. It is a fact that it happened. See, now banks allow the big companies to print their own checks. Correct. See, as you have put it, you know, senior people themselves are indulging in this fraud and all that, you know. Informs to the bank, which is not a check that is required to be issued, then, but they inform that one and issued the checks by a false uh, Definitely false, sir. Let's, yeah, exactly. let's take an example of the demonetization itself. Hmm. Demonetization, we had an instance where, uh, you know, the bank, now some people in the bank itself was, in one input. Correct? So, how much of a checks and balance you hold, definitely there will be one fellow who will be much more smarter. Yeah, yes. See, you need to keep in mind, as and when auditor becomes smarter, fraudster also becomes smarter. <laughs> that is a golden rule. Yeah. So, we need to keep in mind, not only should we update our knowledge, we should also see the trends with it. Yeah. Anybody else in the audience, any specific questions which I would love to take it? Five so anything on Excel, anything on this thing? Yes sir. Recruitment expenditure sir. Uh, okay, so this was an interesting case. Recruitment expenditure. The key HR employee, HR manager had a tie up with the recruitment agency. And what happens? Every time that recruitment below sends it, of course one or two levels interview happen, but there are some profiles walk in and other features are there, you know very basic low level profiles. Hire these people, try to take something backwards. Now how do you identify these cases is, I will give you one case, you know, identifying who is the vendor from whom I need to procure. One case when I was doing a procurement of vendor, you know I received three quotations, typical rule of uh, 
for procurement is everywhere we need to receive three codes and that we all know that. But the beauty was all the three codes looked very different etc. I didn't have any suspicion. But when I looked into slightly detail all the three had the same address. I said extreme case also possible first floor, first floor, floor, second floor. But then where I got a suspicion was all the three quotations had the same spelling mistake. All the three quotations are in the same spelling mistake means what? The same way three letter, different letters is done it. Correct? So these are alternate things. But where we can use in the recruitment is identify who are these employees who are coming in and the payment goes to the recruitment agency. Within two months this will quit. You saw that uh, rule which happens. So I have made a payment to recruitment agency and recruitment agency normally charge 8.33% which is nothing but one, one, by two, one month salary, the CTC they charge. And there is a rule that after one month or two months only we will make payments except for some companies have come out. But many times that fellow quits. Recruitment agency happily taken. And who should intimate the finance team that you have to call back that money? HR. HR never does that. So which means payment is not the recruitment agency. Whereas there is a deficiency in the service terms of contract not on it. That's one example which you could think. Anything on the sales or ordering cycle which you can draw references to? On the revenue education in the bank, like interest in the bank side, how can you relate in the Okay, interest revenue recognition. I will give a simple instance. We know how many loans have been granted in a month. Every loan should have a loan processing charge. I am just talking about one example. Every loan should have a loan processing charge. All of us have it. And it invariably there is a some specified rate. Bank portals sometimes have a facility to waive that. Some cases it is not automatic. So in that case what you can do, simple check. We have that ledger which says from the bank you just take the ledger which says revenue or uh, revenue from uh, what is that, uh, loan processing charges and take the dump of loans granted during the month. It is possible. If it is not available, take last month's loans, take this month's loans, do a comparison, you will get new loans. Verify whether this all items are there. Simple check. Or we know what is the percentage. Because loan is always a percentage. Take the sanction value multiplied the percentage. A simple check. Now this is where if you can have more complicated scenarios you can try to further it. Another, another example could be interest. Where you know checking whether my interest has been accrued. One of the cases I found it a simple and it's I used to identify. 2012 one reversal entry was not passed. What banks earlier used to do, they always used to pass what is called YTD entries. Meaning, June they will pass entry from April to June. July 1st they will reverse that entry. September they will pass the entry from April to September. So impact will still be the same. But what had happened, in some branches, the reversal did not happen. I analyzed my advances and I identified, you remember I told you the chart where I had graph. Some ledger was showing a straight graph. I simply filtered it. I got to know this was a case where it did not move at all. And what was the name of the ledger? Interest receivable. Interest receivable sitting in advances. So I went and asked them what is this ledger? Went and verified. Every debit there is a reversal credit. I went five years backwards, there was a case. And I had to we had to issue what is that? What is that called? The MOC. MOC, right? We had to issue an MOC because the impact was huge. And unfortunately, profit making branch became loss making. I said, I am not I'm doing my job. I cannot do much. And the best part was, the poor bank manager who was there at that point of time, he did not apply the check. The new bank manager, he got a hit. His rating got a hit, etc. He had to explain to the authorities, etc. But still, look at the impact. And the biggest reason our bank manager was a sir, please sir. No sir, why sir, all those things. Of course, some cases, there are genuine cases. You know, if it's a rule of, uh, you know, small uh, violations, etc. But in case of large, we have to take our materiality step. That is one thing which I could think of bank. Of course, bank we, in fact, when I did IT audit of banks, we used to do a lot of functional testing. In fact, savings bank daily interest rate also we did calculation. Simple, put it into Excel, closing balance multiplied into 4% into 1 by 365. Summarize the entire thing. We got to know that 36.33 was the interest, whereas credited was only 36 rupees. And all of us know that. There was a very famous fraud which happened in US or UK called siphoning or what is that? Uh, salami technique where small sums of money are transferred to different accounts. Then what I had to do? I went literally to the rule book of the 
company, you know, that banking the software, I asked them to give me the rule file. We opened the rule file, looked into the lines, and then we said that there was a round of rule written and balance amount was not credited to any other one. Therefore, satisfied. But it becomes complicated, right? So that is why we love the rules. And that is why the interest check you now on all the deposit holders you can do the change. Simple check is take the amount, apply the promotion. Of course, you will always, always ask sir, each deposit cannot be opened on different dates. Very good, you can apply that rate also. What is the date of FD? Open FD. What is my cutoff date? This minus this is the number of days outstanding. Multiply that, that should be my interest expenditure. Please apply these checks. Very basic checks. Don't apply for entire bank, uh, branch account. Your Excel will get hung up or you will get hung up. So apply it on for probably test case 5, 10, 15. Once you got it, keep on increasing the sample size and see whether the entire population will get. Any other uh, scenarios, any other instances? Alright, so shall we call it a day with that? Alright, thank you so much for being a wonderful audience. My contact details are there. I will be happy if you have any queries, anything on Excel, anything on data analytics, anything on automation, anything on IT audit. I will be more than happy to help you. Alright, thank you so much. Bye -bye.